Laney will receive the second half kickoff, leading 12 to six as we begin the third quarter of play and the Cats will do so at the 28 yard line after a 10 yard return by Jarvis Washington. Well, all season long, our field goals and extra points have been sponsored by Georgia Military College and their Georgia Military College Kicks for College program. And Matt Lane is standing by down with a, on the sidelines with another Augusta Auto Auction sideline report and a very special guest, Matt. Thank you, John. That's right, we're joined on the field by GMC Admissions Officer Lonzo Smith, our good friend from GMC. And can you just talk about it real quick? What made GMC want to get involved with high school football? It's all about the students. It's all about getting students to know that GMC is here, that this is a great opportunity for them to further their education. If they need to stay home, this is a great place. Our motto is start here, go anywhere. What, what would you say is the biggest misconception from students on the Augusta campus? Um, I think the biggest misconception about GMC is that you have to go to the military if you want to come to Georgia Military College. It's a military history, but a civilian experience. What do you recommend that, like, if anyone, especially like a high school senior, wants more information about GMC and what, the, what you guys offer day in and day out? They can go to our website, gmc.edu, or they can just stop by the campus, see one of the admissions officers, and we'll take them on a tour so they can see what the campus is all about and how it will fit into their educational plan. What's the most fulfilling thing on your end that you enjoy kind of seeing students year in and year out over at GMC? Seeing them when they're sort of scared sitting in my office and see when they walk across the stage, you know, with their diploma and then knowing that they're going on to their next degree and completing their education, making their dreams come true. Well, I know we've really enjoyed having you on board this year for our Kicks for College program that we do uh, for all the extra points and field goals throughout the year. So we really appreciate uh, GMC being a part of high school football. Well, we love it and we want to do it again. Thank you very much. That's Alonzo Smith, admissions officer from Georgia Military College. Like you said, look them up, give them a call, and they can take you on a tour of the campus. Back to you, John. Our thanks to Georgia Military College for being such a big part of our broadcast this season and for everything they do for high school football. Well, you saw Mario Sumter with a 41-yard gain. So now Laney sets up deep inside Josie territory at the 29-yard line. That puts them over 200 yards rushing in the half. They had 172 yards on the ground. Josie with just 50. And Sumter, who was perfect throwing the ball in the first half, is going to remain perfect as he finds Don Hanley. And that's going to add another 15 yards at the end of the play on a personal foul against Josie. Yeah, they slammed him down, and the officials threw the flag. He cannot pick up a man and body slam him. Cannot do it. 230 total yards personal in the first foul. half, Laney just 78 hug. for Josie. But they couldn't punch it in those last couple of possessions. And that's why Josie's only down six. Pretty clean game, just three penalties on Laney, two on Josie at half. Uh, one turnover, that came from Laney. Leading carriers in the first half. Ball, uh, Dar uh, Jarvis Washington, 67 yards Goal on seven carries. Also a big one from the freshman as well. Big first half. Jordan Stringer, seven carries for 64 yards and a TD. Those were the leading individual performers in the first half of this one. So that puts Laney inside the Augusta Technical College red zone, and that will take them inside the five-yard line on the legs of Chad Welcher. Yeah, the sophomore Welcher, who is probably their third option, but he can run the ball as well. They got the freshman string, and of course, Washington's look great. And they've got Page, for that matter, the big pullback as well. It's really smart what they do. I know you would like to run behind Page, but to use him as a decoy, because you assume as a defender, when you see the big guy, he's going to be the lead blocker. And they're really using that counter play uh, pretty effectively tonight, running the football. Second and goal from the five. The give is to Stringer. Touchdown, Laney. That's the second touchdown of the night for the freshman. That kid's got a great, great future here for the Wildcats. He might be the next great one, they, and they've had a bunch. J.K. Sab, you can go through the list, and uh, this kid might be the next great runner here at Laney. Robert Dunn comes to mind. Oh, yeah, Robert Dunn, who went on to Auburn, and, man, he was electrifying. One of the best return guys we've ever had in the CSRA, in my opinion. And the aforementioned Georgia Military College kicks for college will not be made as Rodney McFadden elects to go for two. So a Ken Nugent one call, that's all moment for Coach McFadden. And it will result in a no good. So the two point conversion is not successful. And Laney's lead is 18 to six with 9.59 left to play here in quarter number three. didn't 
take long. Boy, that didn't take long. Laney flies down the field and covers 74 yards in less than two minutes to extend its lead to 18 to six under 10 minutes to play in the third. On the kickoff return for Josie is Xavier Reed. And yeah. he'll bring it out across the 25 yard line. You get the feeling Josie really needs something in this possession. They got to keep the ball away from Laney. They haven't been able to stop really their ground game. Luckily, they were able to hold him out of the end zone a couple of times there in the first half. Well, folks, each uh, week, of course, we are always talking up McDonald's. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do uh, not only this, but uh, they're involved in everything, really, we do from the coaches and captains banquet at the beginning of the year all the way, of course, to Border Bowl uh, and uh, each game each week. And with us from McDonald's, we've got uh, Greg Abraham. Uh, we've had him before. Uh, Greg is a uh, former Laney Wildcat, so you got to be loving what you're seeing right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We always love to see our team win and do something. Exactly. And we were talking about Laney's really dominated Richmond County, really dominated Josie for a long, long time. This year they uh, had, took a step back, but in this rivalry game they come ready to play. Josie's the team they look forward to beating the most, I think. Oh, yeah. You know, well, we lost a lot of a lot of seniors last yeah. year, I think about 22 or something like that. But yeah. uh, they they always come in and get ready to play for a rivalry game. A couple of real good-looking young running backs. The, uh, the freshman, Jordan Stringer, who just scored the touchdown, is going to yeah, be something. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, talk to us about McDonald's. How did you get your start with the company? Uh, well, I actually started as a crew person, worked my yeah. way up through the ranks, and yeah. uh, and now I'm actually a general manager at uh, McDonald's in North Augusta. That is that is terrific, and I know we talk each week about what the young people in the community mean to McDonald's. You guys mean a ton to them, but they mean a lot to you because it's a lot of your workforce. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, not only are they patrons that come in every yeah. day, but they, a lot of them on the offseason, this is their first job. McDonald's is always, you know, the go-to for the first job, so we, um, we're, we're deeply rooted with a lot of them. And I know North Augusta is having a great year there in the playoffs right now. I yeah. imagine after the football games, you guys are packed with oh, a happy oh yeah. Yellow Jacket fan. Oh, yeah, and they say they <laughs> win the state championship this year. So they, they <laughs> hey, they are to predict. They're in trouble right now, though, down 20-7. <laughs> oh, to seven. So uh, hopefully hopefully they'll come back so you'll have some happy customers oh, tonight. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I hope so. Well, Greg, man, we really appreciate what you guys at McDonald's do. Congratulations on your success with the company. We appreciate you being out here. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you Thanks a lot, man. Thanks a lot. Greg Abraham with – uh, McDonald's, and we appreciate him stopping in to see us. And uh, John, you know, he, he says he's over at North Augusta where tonight the Yellow Jackets struggling a bit. They need a big second half. Yeah, North Augusta trailing Westwood 20-7 to in their playoff game. The, the uh, Yellow Jackets coming off their first undefeated regular season since 1962, but in trouble in the playoffs. And we've got a man down for Laney on the near side here. Uh, I believe that might be Donald Henley. Well, that would not be good news for the basketball coach. <laughs> because yeah. Henley's a starting guard and one of the better players for this team. We'll keep an eye on that as we take a Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout on the field. Henley was able to walk off the field in his own power. You see him up there at the top of your uh, screen, still walking around a little slowly, but he is back in the ball game. A.B., you got a big update on that Thompson game. Yeah, Thompson trailed Richmond Academy 31-28. This is a Thompson team that was number two in the state until last week. They suffered their first loss. A little bit of hangover from that game, perhaps, but first play of the second half, Thompson scores a touchdown. They lead it 35-31, a barn burner there. Some other tight ones as well, and, of course, you can catch them all with football Friday night. 11.35 over on WJBF News Channel 6. So at, before the injury, the result of the previous play was enough for a first down. So the Eagles have a fresh set of downs. Trailing by 12, seven minutes and change to play here in quarter number three. Out of the shotgun. It is Godby. He darts ahead across the 45, but there is a flag down back behind the line of scrimmage, and I believe that will be coming back. They've, run, they've been running Godby out of the... Uh, Wild Eagle, I guess you'd call it, uh, for most yeah. of the uh, I've most got of the, the, face the second mask half now. Here. Is that an endangered species? That Wild <laughs> Eagle? Face mask, five yard face mask. <laughs> Seventy. Uh, offensive face mask call. You don't hear that every day. Yeah, one of the linemen got their hands up a little high. That'll back him up five yards. 
We're also keeping an eye, as we've been talking about all night, on that Screven County-Jefferson County game, and it is now at the half with the Gamecocks up 24 to 7. Not necessarily the surprised they're winning, but I am surprised they're up 17. I think, That's think the score will raise squad. a few eyebrows yeah. around the state. Yep. Aquinas appears to be on its way to a region title, leading Stratford 20 to 7 at the half. I thought they would have a much tougher time there too. Stratford, not a bad football team out of the Macon area. And Evans up 24-14 on Heritage. Ball comes loose, and John, who's got? Looks like we have two guys sharing possession here and I believe it's going to be Josie football wow Johnny on the spot there uh, diving on it for Josie man what a great was. play though by the Josie defensive front there and I'm not sure who busted through to make the play as Zion Little coming up big to recover the football for the Eagles yeah watch the play here mm. and was that that was yeah that was Chad Welcher yep the running back coming in on the blitz uh, that could be an Augusta Payne center hit of the game nominee as well. So it backs the Eagles up all the way to the 18-yard line, and the Eagles will take a Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout to talk about it. It gives us a chance to remind you we will be selecting our offensive and defensive players of the game so you'll want to stay tuned after the game to see which players will be named the mcdonald's offensive and defensive players of the game we want to say thank you once again to mcdonald's for their sponsorship of game night live this season yeah some of those winners throughout the year you'll hear their name called tonight when the border bowl five rosters are announced during football friday night on wjbf news channel six and you may see some also not only playing in the border bowl in january but right after the Border Bowl, a few weeks later, uh, the all-CSRA team will be announced. Only one player for each position, and it is always fun to uh, you know, see those players dressed up, getting recognized. Uh, just a great, great night in prime time on WJBF when the teams are announced. And it looks like, is it 27-21? Or is that, yeah, 27-21. Evans mm. in a dogfight. That game you mentioned a moment ago was 24-14. Evans led 24 to nothing. Heritage scored a touchdown, got an onside kick, and scored another touchdown all in the final 60 seconds of the first half to make it a game. And right now they only trail Evans by six. That is a huge game with a lot of region implications and playoff seeding implications there uh, going on uh, at Evans. Second and 18, Eagles from their 18-yard line. After losing 13 yards on the previous play. They're going to throw and overthrow everybody. DeKale Fluellen was back there. Running step for step with him was Mario Sumter, the two quarterbacks with a foot race back there. Well, and he had, he had two receivers on the pattern. One went to the middle of the field. The safety left him, and so you had safety help there from Sumter. These two teams battling for bragging rights here tonight. Neither of them headed to the postseason as it has been a struggle for both Laney and Josie. But for Laney, uh, this is, they're not used to this. First time they've been out of the playoffs since 2009. It's been a while, and the Wildcats, you know, again, the, you heard uh, Greg Abraham from McDonald's even said, hey, we lost 22 seniors off last year's team. Mm -hmm. And two of those seniors were kids who signed college scholarships and a few others uh, possibly playing on Saturdays. And, it's tough to lose that many in one year. Grovetown able to do it. They lost 33, but they were able to do it. Fort Gordon helps them a lot. So the Eagles need 18 yards on third down. It is Fluellen back in at quarterback, and he's going to chunk it downfield, and the pass is broken up. And it was Dykees King back there to knock it down for the Cats. And they, Josie will be punting. They just haven't been able to hit one of these big plays. Laney's got good athletes in that secondary, and they're doing a good job staying with the Josie receivers. He had a couple of guys short that he could have thrown to. Instead, he threw it into traffic. And those receivers that were out in the flats were holding their hands up like, hey, we're over here. We're open. Unfortunately, Josie's going to have to punt. Williams has been great doing that for him, but you don't want your punter to be the star of the game, that's no. for sure. And he has done a heck of a job tonight filling in for the usual punter. And he'll kick from his eight-yard line here. 
And another good kick and another good bounce. That's going to roll all the way back to the Laney 34-yard line. One of the better punting performances we've seen all year. Got to give the kid credit. He's done a phenomenal job tonight for Josie. And really, he's helped because Josie, remember, they stopped Laney two possessions inside the red zone. You know, that field position, very, very important in this game. Josie, though, they absolutely have to stop Laney here and get the ball back. That was a 48-yard kick. Not bad. He's got a couple of them tonight. He's averaging right around that for the game. He's got one of 50 yards, one of 48. Some games getting tight. Stratford has scored on Aquinas. That game now 20 to 14 in the third quarter. And Josie, I believe, is going to have to burn a timeout as they couldn't get a player off the field. And Raleigh Roundtree he is not happy on the Eagles sideline because those timeouts could come in. Handy in the fourth quarter. Round tree played with the San Diego Chargers. Also a generous guy. We invited him uh, as a, we have a Napleton Infinity Augusta timeout. We invited him to a charity golf event that I used to do for the uh, for the Make a Wish Foundation. And so he came out and actually brought an Emmett Smith autographed football. He was with the Cardinals at the time, and Emmett Smith was with the Cardinals. And on top of that, he stayed around for the I mean, who does? He stayed around for the auction and bought several items. Uh, as well to help the cause so certainly a good guy and uh, i was real glad when i heard he got the job here at josie and i and i hope they can stick with him and he can get this thing turned around here he's got a very young team so maybe the future's bright for him just those three seniors roundtree in his fifth season in charge here at his alma mater just 13 and 37 so far and we've mentioned it before it has been rough going for the eagles against their arch rival laney since the turn of the century as Laney has won 14 out of the last 15 meetings between these two. And and none of them really close on those victories. It's the last six shots. Yeah. So here come the Cats, first to 10 from their own 34-yard line, and we have seen this before. There goes Jarvis Washington for a big gain into Josie territory all the way down to the Eagle 45-yard line. Yeah, Washington, man, he hits the whole thing. Watch how he is at full speed. That You know, he's at full speed after he takes a few steps. And an excellent job by number four for the Josie Eagles. You saw staying with the play there. That is uh, Tevion Redfield. Redfield only 5'7", 145 pounds, but he made a nice play there to stop what could have been even a bigger game. 21 yards on the carry, and that's going to be the first incompletion of the night. That could have that been a backwards should, pass and should have been a fumble. Should have been a fumble. They blow the play dead, but that could have been a huge play for Josie. Well, yeah, I think they uh, they don't have the luxury of the replay, but I, that replay I think is going to show that was behind the line or behind the quarterback. Going to get a look at it. Oh, here. no oh, doubt. No doubt. Two yards it. behind him. Yeah. So a huge break for Laney there because that was going to be six the other way. Wow. Mm. Man, I, and the Josie coaches handle it pretty well. I'd be going crazy. I would probably be kicked out of the game at this point <laughs> if I were the Josie coaching staff. And straight up the middle once again goes Washington. He'll be up close to another first down at the 40-yard line, 35-yard line, I should say. The Washington approaching 100 yards. He had 67 in the first half. Yeah, so. and you, you got Stringer who's going to be right around. You know, he's just under 100 probably as well with two touchdowns. Washington now with 97. So the Wildcats need a yard on third down. It says first and 10 on your screen, but it is third and one from the 36 yard line. They don't have the big kid Page in there, 31. And up the middle goes Welcher. He's got some running room. He is inside the 25, all the way down to the 21 yard line as this Laney offense and the offensive line is starting to have its way with Josie. Well, by the way, also North Augusta's perfect season in jeopardy. Westwood has tacked on a field goal and lead it 23 to seven. That would be a major disappointment. I remember a few years ago, I think it was 07 or 08, Evans went 10 and 0 and lost in the first round of the playoffs to finish 10 and one. And boy, it's not been a good night for Midland Valley. They had a tough go of it though. They had to play South Point South Point up 53-8. to eight. They fake a field goal and score a TD to go up 60-8. to eight. Midland Valley folks not happy, courtesy of my buddy Bill Botham, who's sending me some scores. Well, that's going to put Washington up over 100 yards rushing as he rumbles down 
to the 16-yard line. So give him seven more yards. That's 104 yards on the night for him. Yeah, I really, I, you know, Washington didn't really do much. I don't know if he was injured or just wasn't getting a lot of playing time or, or the first time we saw Laney. And trust me, they were playing Screvin County, who blitzes those two great linebackers the whole game. But uh, I was impressed with the freshman. I don't remember Washington, but he's been very impressive in this one too and going to have a false start on Laney That'll here. Back him up. They were first and 10 at the 11. They can get a first down without a touchdown. The carry was 12 yards for Washington. Got illegal procedure against the offense. And by the way, all, by the way, all these scores and highlights and information and stats throughout the game, courtesy of our buddy Nathan Edwards, who's been with us uh, each year, and uh, he keeps he's got he's got a phone going, he's got a marker, <laughs> he's got a dry erase board, he's got index cards, and he makes us look good because he does all the work behind the scenes for us. He's high school football's version of Carl Rowe. I'm telling you. Oh, by the way, ARC has kicked the field goal. It's 35-34, Thompson, folks. That one would shock everybody, including the Richmond folks, if that happens. And Sumter is dropped behind the line of scrimmage by Zion Little, another one of the talented juniors on this Josie team. And there's a flag down back behind the line of scrimmage. I'm guessing that Raleigh Roundtree will decline that. Yeah, you had two guys in motion. The offense, that penalty is declined. Yeah. Second down. So it will be second down. Loss of three on the play. And set up second and 18 as the Wildcats go in the wrong direction. Blaney is in the Augusta Technical College red zone, but just barely now after a flag and a loss of three on the sack. So second and 18, it is second and 18. Sumter, pump fake, looking long and intercepted, picked off in the end zone by Myron Godby, and he will bring it out to the 28-yard line. That is the play that Josie needed to keep their hopes alive in this game. Not only does it stop a drive, but it gives Josie decent field position. In this case, they tried to fake it to the flats and then throw it deep, and boy, the safety Godby just never fooled. The ball overthrown by about three yards, and Godby just playing center field. They're able to catch it, and a nice run back as well. Godby, just a junior, but already getting looked from colleges by the likes of Newberry, South Carolina State, Albany State. There are three or four players on this Eagles team who are getting some looks as juniors. So there is some talent there. Well, let's see what Josie does with it here. They desperately need points. That first drive, they came out, John, so fired up. They looked so good running the ball, and they've just been able to do nothing since. You got to credit Rodney McFadden and his yeah. coaching staff for making the adjustments because they have shut down this Josie offense since then. Well, they've been going for big plays, and, you know, the first drive, they didn't do that. They just ran the football. Let's see if they can do it here again. And uh, just Laney just all over that running play. Yeah, misdirection, and the Wildcats were not buying it. That was A.J. Walker on the stop. And the misdirection was, instead of going forward, they went backwards. <laughs> You're right. You had Boy, Walker with a great defensive play there, busting through that line and off the floor. It's one thing to bust through the line and disrupt things, but, you know, knock the lineman back into the play. That time he just ran right through him and then got the ball carrier also. Out of the shotgun is Llewellyn. He's got three wide receivers at the top of the screen. And now he's being chased and the fire downfield and gets rid of it to avoid the sack. The pressure being applied by Jordan Stringer. Yeah, I'd say Stringer, when you're a freshman and you're starting on the varsity, that's one thing. When you're starting on both sides of the ball, as a ninth grader, I mean, that just didn't used to happen in our day, John. I mean, you, ninth grade, you were on JV. Sophomore, you were probably on JV. Junior, you know, you were every now and then a sophomore would make varsity. It was super rare for that to happen. And nowadays, well, these kids are coming in so much more prepared for what they're going to see in high school. You don't know this, but A.B. taught that guy everything he knows about dancing. Well, you know. He's mixed in a couple of new things, but for the most part, you're <laughs> You right. can't take all the credit. <laughs> uh, we have another Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout on the field with Laney leading 18-6. to 6. 99 seconds left 
here in quarter number three. We have talked all night about the roster reveals for Border Bowl 5 coming up on Football Friday Night over on News Channel 6 tonight and, at 11.35. And let me give them to you right now. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Let's steal Nathan and Zach's yeah. thunder. People in the truck were about to <laughs> come up here and attack. But while we're looking ahead yeah. to things, yeah. we have our final oh. Stump A.B. trivia so question of the year so coming up tonight. in the fourth quarter. You have, a, I believe, a perfect record and on the line tonight. Yes. So much pressure in this last game. Do you know how demoralizing it would be to come this far and not get it done? Uh, they need 14 on third down Do the Eagles. It'll be Flewellen in trouble. Throws and incomplete. Yeah, lucky that wasn't picked off. Back jump, uh, Jumping back into coverage there was number 88. That is Jay Graham. So the Eagles got the big turnover, but couldn't do anything with it as that Wildcat defense once again wreaking havoc on this Josie offense. And they're going to have to punt it away. And while they've had good punts, that's not helping them at this point. They've got to get some scores, and they've got to get them quick. Got a great game going on between Fox Creek and, uh, Fox Creek and Chesterfield. 24-23, it's been back and forth the whole game. Of course, you get that final on football Friday night later this evening over on WJBF News Channel 6. Williams to boot it away for the Eagles. Another for great own punt. 15 wow. Look at the bounce on this one. Wow. Best putter of the year. That's all the way down to the 11-yard line. He kicked it from his own 11. Wow. And we got a what late a flag flies in at the 32-yard line of Laney. This kid's averaging over 50 yards a kick tonight. And he's not the normal punter. That's unbelievable. Well, he is from now on. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to a Naquan Foreman, who's one of the best oh, players no, on this team. But he can get that job back, even if he wasn't. Unnecessary happy. roughness against which way? Unnecessary roughness against the Wildcats. So, in addition to the great punt by Duante Williams. The Cats will back themselves up inside the 10-yard line. That'll be the battle to watch next year. He and Naquan Foreman. I've got both personal Jews. foul and necessary roughness 63 again. 63 yards. Laney. 63 oh, yards on that kick. So he's got two of 50 and then a 63 yard. We haven't seen anything like that this year. Nathan Edwards tells us he's five punts tonight, averaging 46.2 yards. Pretty stout. He'd be leading the NFL in punting right now. <laughs> 46 yards of punt. And that's a stat you can't correlate because you're just kicking the ball. It's not like it matters. Yeah, he's not allowed any returns as well, which is a big stat. So the Cats backed up to their five, but not for long. Jordan Stringer, uh, he'll be punished, but he'll bring the ball all the way out to the 16, 17-yard line and get Laney out of that deep hole. Possible Augusta Pain Center hit of the game. And how about this if we had it from our smallest guy on the field? 5'7", 145 pounds. And watch this wallop right Ooh. there. 5'7", 145. The in Redfield, a junior. But the play was enough for a first down. And the Cats will be at their own 17 as the clock ticks down to 112. So it's first and 10 from the Laney 17-yard line. Well, this time it goes to Washington, and Washington is going absolutely nowhere. Knocked down immediately by Taj Manigault, just a sophomore. Well, that's the first time tonight we have talked about a defensive lineman making a play in the backfield. We did talk about Brown, who sacked Sumter on a scramble, but that time a defensive lineman beat one of the Laney offensive linemen and made right. a play in the backfield. I need him when I take my exam. My play lost forward. We second and 14. And the clock now inside the final minute of play here in quarter number three. Taj Manigault, he's only a 10th grader. I mean, they got, again, both these teams have some good young players. They got to stay stay with this program. Again, only 25 players. What We have a... <laughs> Get Matt off the field, we everybody. Somebody on the field, I, I think he was went out to retrieve something. I'm not sure exactly what, but... He's off now, and the Cats set up second and 14, and Washington's in trouble and dropped down at the 15-yard line. And that was 
Brandon Wallace. All 246 pounds of him made the tackle for Josie. And that will be the end of the third quarter. So we are through three quarters of play. Your score from Eagle Way, the Laney Wildcats 18, the Josie Eagles 6. One more quarter to play for this season of Game Night Live.